The case of Nicola Bully has attracted worldwide attention from those who are curious about circumstances surrounding her prolonged disappearance, the intricacies of personal details surrounding her mental state leading up to her disappearance, and the heartbreaking accidental discovery of her remains in the river previously scoured by professionals and law enforcement. Finding Nicola has been, or should have been, the main objective in this complex missing persons case. Now that she's been found, the family has said, finally, Nikki, you are no longer a missing person. You have been found. We can let you rest now. At the heart of this investigation lies a family. Nicola's two little girls, her loving partner, Paul, her distraught parents, and troves of heartbroken friends, extended family, and members of the community. Will they get the final closure they need when so many questions are left unanswered? How did she wind up in that river? What was her cause of death? What was she going through in her final moments? How did a regular day turn into such a nightmare? So now, let's get into it. On February 19th, a body was found and identified as 45-year-old Nicola Bully, the missing mom who had been missing for over three weeks in the UK. Nicola went missing on January 27th after dropping her kids off at school and headed to a park where she would walk her dog Willow and log into a work call. In a 10-minute window, she vanished. Her phone was left behind on a bench, still logged into her work with her video off and her phone muted. Her dog was seen between the gate and the bench without a harness on. From there launched a 23-day search for the missing mom. The main theory from the police was that she was in the river, but there were a few obstacles and questions about that theory. A suspicious red van was reported and two fishermen were said to be suspicious as well and trying to cover their faces the day Nicola disappeared. But on February 19th, a body was found. At 11.36 a.m., witnesses call in about a body in the River Wire, close to Rockcliffe Road. It was within a mile of where Nicola was last seen. A photo was snapped at the moment the area was shown to police. A man and woman discovered the body while walking their dog and reported it. The Lancashire Police stated, an underwater search team and specialist officers have subsequently attended the scene, entered the water, and have sadly recovered a body. No formal identification has yet been carried out, so we are unable to say whether this is Nicola Bully at this time. Procedures to identify the body are ongoing. We are currently treating the death as unexplained. Nicola's family has been informed of developments, and our thoughts are with them at this most difficult of times, we ask that their privacy is respected. At 11.50 a.m., police raced to the scene. A witness has described that police cars were flying down the road to the river wire after the body was found. And the witness said, I drove down Rockcliffe Road for almost a mile. I noticed a man and women and two police officers on the embankment. I pulled off in about 11.50 a.m. and I heard the man talking to police about something in the undergrowth. Police cars were flying down the road with the blues and twos going. A police officer, pulled up a few minutes later and got the drone out. Five minutes later, the police helicopter arrived. Officers then asked the person to get out, so the person moved 200 yards down the road, and they said they could clearly see the man pointing at the riverbank. Then more police officers raced down the road. They cleared the entire road. They said the police hurriedly sealed off a road and informed the family about the situation, but at that point, that identification was not known, and it was deemed an unexplained death. Now, Nicola was found by those two witnesses in those reeds and undergrowth less than a mile away from where she disappeared. In this map, you can see to the right where Nicola was last seen, where the bench was, and if you go all the way to the left, you can see where her body was actually found. Now, the witness that found her said to the officer, it was a body, it was down there, it was a body of a woman, there's definitely a body down there. And this man and woman were later seen sitting on the wall vaping, they said, looking ashen-faced. Now, before Nicola was found, we heard from her parents who said every day is a struggle. They were waiting to find out more news. They had hope. They said, we're no further on from three weeks ago. We just need a breakthrough to give us some hope. And now they have that breakthrough, although so very, very painful. Yet it's no longer a mystery as to where Nicola is. Unfortunately, it's not the news that any of them wanted to hear. So the family was notified and they confirmed through dental records that it was in fact Nicola Bully. Paul released a brief statement and said, no words right now, just 
agony. We're all together. We have to be strong. And then after the body was identified, they said, Nikki, we can let you rest now. They said, we will never forget Nikki. How could we? She was the center of our world. She was the one who made our lives so special and nothing will cast a shadow over that. Our girls will get the support they need from the people who love them most. Finally, Nikki, you are no longer a missing person. You have been found. We can let you rest now. And here's what the family made a statement in the recent press conference. Our girls will get the support they need from the people who love them the most. And it saddens us to think that one day we will have to explain to them that the press and members of the public accuse their dad of wrongdoing misquoted and vilified friends and family. This is absolutely appalling. They have to be held accountable. This cannot happen to another family. We tried last night to take in what we have been told in the day, only to have Sky News and ITV making contact with us directly when we expressly asked for privacy. They again have taken it upon themselves to run stories about us to sell papers and increase their own profits. It is shameful they have acted in this way. Leave us alone now. Do the press and other media channels and so-called professionals not know when to stop? These are our lives and our children's lives. To those who genuinely helped and supported us privately, we thank you. The community support in St Michael's, friends, neighbours and strangers has been nothing short of comforting and heartwarming. Friends, you know who you are, thank you. Our hearts truly break for others who have missing loved ones. Keep that hope alive. Finally, Nikki. You are no longer a missing person. You have been found. We can let you rest now. We love you. Always have and always will. We will take it from here. Now, it's a fine line telling the story and remaining respectful, relevant, and reporting facts versus rumor and speculation to sell headlines. And that's what the family has been saying about you know, certain people and news. Julie McKay is a former detective and criticized armchair detectives driven by thirst for true crime. She says that these amateur sleuths has made the process more difficult for the police and Miss Bully's family. She also acknowledged that some people do have a genuine desire to help, but she criticized those who were driven by their own gratification, their own self-promotion, or even narcissistic approaches. And this case has been massive in the news. People in Canada, the States, everywhere is hearing about it. But they said that this has distracted significantly from their official investigation. Rebecca Smith, who is the senior investigating officer, we've seen her in the press conference. She said, in 29 years police service, I've never seen anything like it. Some of it has been quite shocking and really hurtful to the family. There's criticism, not just with sleuths. There's, and TikTokers, there's criticism of the actual investigation. The Lancashire police are facing a lot of criticism. Their main theory has always been that Nicola ended up in the river, which is where she was found. However, recently they did a press conference announcing that Nicola was high risk due to vulnerabilities, specific vulnerabilities. But at that time they said they didn't want to go into specifics out of respect for the families. But later that day, they announced publicly that Nicola struggled with alcohol issues, said brought on by menopause, which has, in my last video, has brought on a whole slew of comments. So this caused an uproar from several people and not just the public, but other authorities. And what was interesting, they didn't give these specifics to people assisting in this investigation, like Peter Falding, who's a specialist who searched for Nicola in the river. The prime minister stated that there was concerns over announcing this information about Nicola to the public, and that there's gonna be an internal review that will be conducted. The Independent Office for Police Conduct is also investigating the contact officers had with Nicola on January 10th, 17 days before she went missing. They did a call to her house and no one got arrested, but it was a welfare check. 
Former Lancashire Police Chief Superintendent Bob Eastwood defended the force's investigation amid an absolute onslaught of criticism. When he was asked if, how it was possible a body could be found a mile from where Nicola's last location was, despite a huge extensive search, he said that the river is tidal and fast flowing. He says the way the tide comes and goes, it is possible that the body could have flowed in and flowed out and has eventually been given up by the water. To jump in and automatically assume that the body was there the whole time is a step too far. Now he goes back to saying about the detective superintendent Rebecca Smith, the senior investigating officer on the case, says that she has been subjected to misogynistic abuse during a three-week search that has attracted this national attention in the Nicola Bully case. And then he was talking about so-called specialists who imposed themselves on this case. He said that they fed into a lot of people's obsessions and he said, I'm hoping their consciences are currently in overdrive. Now, another person, Andrew Snowden, who's Lancashire's police and crime commissioner said, officers were being as transparent as they can be in what is an incredibly sensitive and complex case. Britain's FBI were brought in as well for this investigation and Lancashire police called in a senior detective from the National Crime Agency to assist with the Nicola Bully case. And this detective worked on a case called the Julia James case where a police community support officer was murdered while walking her dog. This NCA detective re recommended that external experts analyze the search, the family liaison and digital forensics on Nicola's phone and her Fitbit. And a forensic clinical psychologist and a behavioral expert were brought in to assess Nicola's state of mind and map any potential profile of potential uh, offenders before the body was discovered. And a dog behavioral specialist was also brought in to see if Nicola's spaniel, Willow, would be able to assist in the case. And then when it comes to Peter Falding, who was the specialist who was searching the river, he's defending his um, search. And he said the sonar doesn't go into the reeds. That's why he didn't see it. And he's also saying that he could probably get canned for things that he's been saying. That river was thoroughly searched using sonar technology for three days, but Nicola wasn't found and he was adamant that she wouldn't be. But he also wasn't told about this alcohol situation and he said he would do a different search. And before that, he was searching also land just in case she might have been buried there. Peter said, the area where Nicola went in was searched thoroughly by very professional police divers on the day, very thoroughly, and she was not there, which leads me to believe that she is not in that river. But then he said, that he wasn't passed on this crucial information, like I said about the alcohol, and he would have changed his search strategy. But he says, a body could lodge in the reeds under debris and you wouldn't see it on any form of sonar, either the police or our sonar. If a body gets lodged in the reeds, it usually gets found by a dog walker that is normal. Now I'm curious because if we had authorities searching all that area, did they not look in there or was it a case that she popped up or what happened? But after Nicola was found, he tweeted and said, our thoughts are with Nicola's family and friends at this difficult time. He said in an interview, I know I'm gonna get canned for this, but I don't care. Police search teams walk that river every day. What do you think? Let me know below. A former inspector named Zoe Billingham criticized the police for releasing unnecessary details and questioned whether they would have done the same for a man. She said, this information literally stopped me in my tracks. There's no need whatsoever to put the level of detail into the public domain as the force did. If it is relevant now, it would have been 20 days ago. Would they have released that information if it weren't a woman? And what are the future implications for families whose loved ones go missing. Now the investigation isn't over. We still need to know what the cause of death is. There's so many questions left unanswered. Did she hit her head? Did she fall down? Was there a medical emergency? Was she pushed? What happened? Was it accident? Was it foul play? What were those final moments and what did it indicate? There was nothing suspicious that morning. It started out as a normal day. She dropped the kids off to school. She chatted with a parent. She went to the park. She texted a friend. She was on a work call and you know she met with other dog walkers and it was said Nicola was a strong swimmer and knew about that river. Now the family is wanting some privacy. There are friends and loved ones and people who are paying tribute to Nicola around that area. 
Uh, I saw ribbons on a bench and the actual bridge as well. The friends and family have also launched a GoFundMe. I will put that in the description box below to help pay for funeral planning and also for Nicola and Paul's little girl's future. Let's take a moment and put some yellow hearts down for Nicola and her family. And I know it's not what anyone was hoping for, but now they know where Nicola is and now they can move on and try to heal. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon.